cannon fodder for the Sega Genesis is basically my favorite parts of games like Command and Conquer. You're walking around controlling a relatively small platoon of infantry units, and once in a while a vehicle or two. And you're performing uh, tasks and missions that aren't too grand. I mean, you're not trying to win an entire war. Most of the time, you're trying to kill all the enemies on a medium-sized map, or trying to destroy all the buildings on said map. As your soldiers walk around and perform missions and complete tasks and kill enemies and destroy things in the environment, they actually gain rank and become better soldiers. But of course, they are just men and not machines, and that means they do die quite a lot. Their firepower power is superior to the enemies but there's a lot of different missions so there's just a lot of time for one or two of really all your soldiers to simply die no matter how high their military rank is to tell you the truth i don't know if gaining ranks even makes them better soldiers it might just be something aesthetic for bragging rights other soldiers replace them but you kind of miss the ones that died it's also obviously a lot like xcom in that regard now, you're not just plowing through a map just walking willy-nilly with no strategy. There's different kinds of environments, different kinds of terrains, like walking through water obviously slows you down, and you sometimes have to find a walkway to move up a cliff, and there's different kinds of settings, from jungles to uh, snowy tundras to desert maps. If you don't come up with a good strategy, you will lose most of your soldiers, and, and believe me, even losing one soldier out of like four or five that you have will greatly hinder the chances of you actually finishing the mission. You do not control an entire army. Every single soldier is vital for the missions in this game. Cannon fodder is a really gruesome war game too. I mean, you wouldn't think that. The little characters are so tiny and the game is so colorful. You would think it's just an adorable little lemming game that children could play. But the characters are often ripped in two. There's blood splattering in every single direction. There's so many gruesome ways to kill and die in this game. It really is brutal, like at Mortal Kombat levels. It's fun and colorful, but at the same time, it shows you how gruesome war can be. You pick up things in the environment too, like explosives. Sometimes you can pick up the explosive to later throw at a building. If you don't want to get your hands dirty, you can just shoot the explosives if they're near a building, and the building will just explode that way. But most of the time, it's smart to pick up the explosive crates, because that way, you will have more grenades. Cannon fodder is also a game that can be deceptively hard. This is mostly because of just how much content there is. You feel like you can just plow through the game. You have to watch your step in every turn. You have to watch out for traps. Not just literal traps on the ground, but enemies coming out of nowhere while your entire platoon is in the middle of a river, completely helpless, like a tuna splashing around on the beach. Sometimes the game needs a clear strategy to win, a strategy you will not realize right away. Sometimes you need to replay a level several times to actually figure out the best way to go about finishing the level. In the 90s, this was a very good change of pace from average games like fighters or side-scrollers. This is a very unique game for a home console. I'm honestly very surprised that using the D-pad works in terms of moving around this crosshair, which was obviously made for a mouse. This unique Genesis Classic gets an official Stan Birdman rating of a 7.5 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, my friends.